Sometimes you've got to wonder what Christians even think the word context means. They seem to think it's some sort of get out of jail free card for the Bible. They, they, they wave that word around like a magic fucking wand and expect all the nasty shit in their book to just disappear. You'll be like, you know, that book says that rape doesn't count if the victim doesn't scream loud enough. Right. And they'll be like, you're, you're taking that out of context. Motherfucker, what possible context could there be where that isn't all the way fucked up? I mean, set, set aside that you're wrong, right? That particular part of the book comes in a long list of rules. The context is God telling you what's what. But even if it wasn't, what scenario could you even imagine where that would be an okay thing to say other than the fucking diatribe condemning it? Now, to be honest, I, I think about half the time they, they say that, they genuinely believe it. They've been told all their lives that the Bible is a good book full of morals and shit, and they've never read it, but way too many people who have read it have said that for them to all be wrong. So if there's a part of the Bible where it says rape isn't rape if she doesn't scream loud enough, I must be taking it out of context. How could something so barbaric show up in a book that you've been assured is not just moral, but the most moral book that could possibly exist? Therefore, there must be some context around that passage that I'm ignoring. Sure, they can't even imagine a context where it wouldn't be reprehensible, but they're dead fucking certain that the Bible isn't reprehensible, so there must be one. But of course, some of them actually do have a context in mind, and it completely gives away the game because they're not talking about textual context, that is where the passage falls in the book and what was said leading up to it, but rather historical context. Now, to be clear, there was no point in history where rape wasn't rape if the victim didn't scream loud enough, but there was a point in history where that was the dominant moral paradigm. And this book is simply conforming to that standard. And look, if I was trying to use this book to argue that the Hebrew people of the 5th century BCE were immoral, that would be a valid argument. Right? It wouldn't be fair to expect them to exhibit a modern understanding of morality any more than it would be fair to expect them to exhibit a modern understanding of mathematics or food sanitation. Whenever you're looking at a historical text, it's important that you place it in its proper historical context, unless... You're claiming that text as a timeless divine mandate that we should use as a moral guidepost in the modern day. The singular author that you can exempt from the benefit of historical context would be an eternal, all-knowing being, right? Now, there is one other way to rescue the context defense, of course, and it might even be the worst of all of them. So you've got your textual context, you've got your historical context, but what about your theological context? Right. Like what about the changes that the religion itself has undergone in the intervening years? And that's how you land in that wildly anti-Semitic. That's the Old Testament territory. This one is my mom's favorite. Hi, mom. This is where you say, yeah, that stuff was in the Old Testament. It's it's bad. Sure. Here and there. But Jesus changed all that stuff. Now, I'll admit, in many ways, this is better than the others. For example, it's wrong in more ways. Like, you know, at least those other bullshit arguments don't throw an entire other religion under the bus to make their point. Because what Christians are really saying when they use this one is, look, we're not like those filthy Jews, okay? Because another word for the Old Testament is the Hebrew fucking Bible. But beyond that, it's also refuted by no lesser authority than Jesus the fuck Christ, who says in the book that till heaven and earth pass, one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. All his little gotchas with the Pharisees, they're all about how he's technically still conforming to the rules. And honestly, if Jesus' purpose was to change the laws of the Old Testament, why would it still come bundled with his book? What would be the point of including it if you were just going to add a, a fucking never mind three quarters of the way through? What's more, the argument is universally disingenuous. All those people who deploy the but that's the Old Testament defense wouldn't hesitate to reach the Old Testament the first time they want to condemn gay people or paganism or atheists or when they're trying to justify the existence and divinity of Jesus Christ in the first place. The whole dismissal has to get awfully selective for the religion to work at all. But wait, there's more. Not only is it a bigoted and disingenuous argument, but it's also a fucking distraction because there is plenty of reprehensible shit in the New Testament, too. Sure, there's at least three times as much in the Old Testament, but that's because the Old Testament is three times longer. Plus, the New Testament doesn't really bother with long lists of moral proclamations because it's counting on the Old Testament to take care of all that shit on its behalf. So it's a fucking Ouroboros of failure. This version of the you're taking the Bible out of context argument fails because it's taking the Bible out of context. 
No matter how you interpret it, the argument is bullshit. There's no context that could justify this shit, and there's no context that even tries. It is a terrible book, and the only context it needs to be put into is a big red circle with a fucking line through it.